Today I've got release dates. Do not buy the new Snapdragon X Elite chip for gaming. Huge news on the next gen X3D chips and Ryzen 9000 pre-orders start with amazing prices. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, if you remember when AMD originally announced their Ryzen 9000 series processors, they also announced their 5000 XT series. That is, two new chips, the Ryzen 9 5900 XT and Ryzen 7 5800 XT. And according to them, they were coming July 2024. Well, it looks like we now actually have those dates because of a couple new listings from B&H Photo Video. As you can see right here, we have Ryzen 7 5800 XT and then the Ryzen 9 5900 XT. It says they are coming soon, specifically 9 a.m. Eastern Time, July 31st. And that is, of course, both CPUs. But the release date news doesn't stop there because if you remember, originally we started seeing rumors of AMD's next-gen APUs releasing July 15th. Then it seemed like it was more or less confirmed because Asus themselves had listings on their own website. But then we heard from a very well-known leaker that in fact it was going to be July 15th, but now it's going to be July 28th. Well, it looks like that is in fact the case. Because if we look here, this was actually listed on Best Buy's website themselves. Originally, you can see that it said 7-15-2024, but now the same notebook is listed as a release date of 7-28. Basically, it does really look like AMD is in fact changing the release date. So if you were originally planning to purchase a notebook with one of AMD's next-gen Ryzen AI APUs, unfortunately, you're going to have to wait a bit longer. Luckily, there's one thing that hasn't changed, and that's the place I always trust when I want to learn more about computers. I'm, of course, talking about today's sponsor, Brilliant, the online learning platform that makes learning computer science easy and also fun because they teach you with engagement, meaning you actually do it yourself with their fun and interactive puzzles. It seriously makes learning a breeze. Whether you want to see how large language models work, the tech that's inside your favorite AI chatbot, or any number of other topics. Topics, like how GPS actually works, thinking in code, using probabilities to predict things, and the list goes on. Basically, Brilliant has it all. Whether you're a beginner or even an expert in your field, Brilliant has something for everyone. So join me and millions more at brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code and you'll get a 30-day free trial. Plus, when you sign up at brilliant.org slash gamermeld, you'll get 20% off your premium membership for life. And next up for today, if you remember a few months back, Qualcomm was kind of hyping up their upcoming Snapdragon X Elite chips coming to notebook PCs. At the time, people were obviously concerned about different applications working well under the new CPU, given the fact that it's based on ARM instead of x86. Well, during all of this, Qualcomm came out and actually made a few statements, with one of those being that Windows games, quote, just work thanks to emulation. Since then, multiple outlets have finally gotten a chance to get their hands on these and run some tests. And as you can see right here, I very much agree with PC World's statement here. Do not buy a Snapdragon X Elite notebook for PC gaming. And the reason for that, well, it's kind of twofold. Starting things off, um, everything doesn't, in fact, just work. As you can see right here, it says they want to address a major problem up front. Most games currently make little or no effort to support Qualcomm's hardware. And because of that it's not looking good. As you can see, these are multiple games that they tested that just really didn't work. Starting things off, we have PUBG, which has an anti-cheat system that currently doesn't support Qualcomm's hardware, so the game doesn't even launch. In Counter-Strike 2, yeah, it launched at first, but the game would frequently lock up for seconds at a time. For Warframe, it launched to the title and login screens, but opened in a weirdly scaled window that made it where you couldn't click the login button. Then when you try to resize or maximize it, it crashed. Then when we moved to Apex Legends, it just refused to launch. Diablo 4, it launched and they were able to enter the game, but the game froze several seconds after they started moving the character. Finally, Valheim actually crashed to the desktop before the game loaded to the start screen. But here's the thing, even in games where they were able to load, Qualcomm did not not do very well. Actually, it did really poorly. 
And as you can see right here, they compared the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite to the Core Ultra 7 155H. Now, I will go ahead and point out the facts that they didn't compare it to the absolute best iGPU. That is actually the X1E84-100, but that one is currently exclusive to the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Edge, so they ultimately use the much more prevalent X1E-80-100, but as you'll notice in these benchmarks, I don't think it's really gonna matter. As you can see, once again, we're looking at the Core Ultra 7 155H, and in Civ 6, it completely crushed the Snapdragon X Elite, we're talking average right here, 21.5 versus 72.3. Moving over to Dota 2, and we see something very similar. We're looking at 52.8, although with 0.1% lows, getting as low as 9.8 FPS versus the 155H, which got average 106.6 with 0.1% lows at 38.1. Then we have Diablo 2 Resurrected. Once again, very similar story. Final Fantasy 14. This one did quite a bit better until you look at the minimum frame rate. 7.0 versus 24. Then we have Total War Warhammer 3. It did quite a bit better in this one. Then Elder Scrolls Skyrim did really horrible there. Cyberpunk 2077, basically this does not look good at all. So if you were sort of thinking about purchasing one of these, hoping that, hey, maybe the battery life will be significantly better and I can still game, I do not suggest it at all. And next up, we have a very interesting news story. If you remember a little while back, I discussed this leak from Moore's Law is Dead, where they claimed that multiple AMD sources communicated that the Zen 5 X3D chips may have less limitations on boost clock and actually have overclocking support. Well, according to this new story from WCCF Tech, that does in fact look to be the case, but apparently it could get even better. As you can see here, according to once again WCCF Tech, they claim, quote, we have managed to learn that among those features is full support for overclocking. They go on to say, yeah, it's right. We're not talking just precision boost overclocking or CO tuning. Enthusiasts on the AM5 platform will be given full overclocking support with the next gen 3D vCache CPUs. And that, of course, suggests that AMD's fine tuned the design of the chips, allowing overclocking, though, they do state that there may still be a few checks in place to safeguard the 3D stacks placed on top of each Zen 5 CCD. But as I said, it actually looks like it could get even better because they claim besides these, there are still some new features that they're expecting to learn about in the coming weeks. Basically, AMD's Ryzen 9000 X3D chips are not only looking like a very nice upgrade over the 7000 X3D chips, but it looks like they're going to offer even more features to make them even faster. And lastly for today, while on the topic of next-gen desktop Ryzen CPUs, we have the first site that's now put these CPUs up for pre-order. And let's just say the pricing looks absolutely incredible. This story originally comes from video cards, where if we move back, you can see that the very popular Slovenian retailer Funtech actually have these CPUs listed for pre-order. And given the fact that this news has been going around pretty much everywhere, but they still haven't taken it down, that at least tells me that this is the real deal. Now, when it comes to the actual pricing, as you can see, they have the Ryzen 9 9950X listed for 660 euros, the 9900X for 500 euros, the 9700X for 400, and the 9600X for 310 euros. And if you're in the US, that may sound like an absolutely ridiculous price, but remember that European countries have something called VAT or value added taxes. In Slovenia, actually has a whopping 22% VAT tax, so when these actually come to the US, they're gonna be significantly cheaper. But luckily, we actually have the original pricing of the Ryzen 7000 chips to compare these two, and once again, it is looking incredible. The Ryzen 9 9950X at 660 euros is significantly cheaper than the 7950X's original retail release at 849 euros. In fact, it's actually even cheaper than the lower 7900 100x at 669 euros. Moving down to the 9900x, we're looking at 500 euros versus the, once again, 7900x at 669. So we're talking 170 euros less than the 7700x was 479, while now it's just 
400 euros and the 7600X was 359 euros while now it's just 310. Now I know some of you may think that isn't all that big of a deal given the fact that Ryzen 7000 has dropped drastically since its initial release but remember that when these do come out that will almost certainly drop the price for Ryzen 7000 as well. Basically this is looking like a win-win for just about everyone. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's Ryzen 9000 release? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day.